Hey bakers, welcome back. Dave here, this is a brand new recipe. Sorry for the very long hiatus. Unfortunately, uh, I get very busy with my day job this time of year and it just becomes very, very challenging to even shoot video, let alone plan for anything. However, this one is kind of interesting. I was planning to do a bake today anyway, but last night my wife, she sent me an email and she said, I want this, I want it right now. So, gotta make her happy, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pivot and we're gonna do sourdough pumpkin dinner rolls. And this is not my recipe. Uh, actually, she linked me directly to this site, which is theperfectloaf.com. And this is a wonderful site, particularly for new bakers. If you're learning how to bake, I strongly urge you to go to this site. I went here, I learned how to do my starter from here. I also uh, worked on some recipes based on the recipes on this site. I kind of refined them into something I can call my own, but I started here, it was a great site. And uh, I, str I still go here now, and my wife does too, because this is where I'm getting the recipe from. So, I will put the link to theperfectloaf.com down below in the description for you. I will also put the link directly to this recipe uh, in this description for you as well. Speaking of which, let's do that recipe. Let's talk about how we're gonna make some sourdough pumpkin dinner rolls. So, the recipe calls for two steps in the main uh, ingredient part of the mix. There's a Levon stage and then the mix and prepare stage. So, for the Levon, because we are doing a sourdough, and that will take 48 grams of high protein white flour. I'm using bread flour. I think that's totally fine because it's very high protein. Uh, 48 grams of water, room temperature, and also 48 grams of sourdough starter. It says ripe on the recipe. That just means you didn't feed it and then try to use it in the Levant. You take a starter about four to eight hours before. In my case, usually four. Today I'm gonna do eight hours before and uh, you use that to create your Levon because it's already been eating all the, the juicy ingredients and getting itself ready to really get, get going for a bake. Okay, that's the Levon. So 48, 48, 48 to make your Levon. Prepare it, set it aside. And then when we do the mix, we are going to do 549 grams of high protein white flour, same thing, bread flour. We are going to use 119 grams of pumpkin puree 113 grams of butter, unsalted, and at room temperature. We're also gonna use 90 grams of whole milk, 42 grams of honey, 131 grams of water, 12 grams of salt, and 143 grams of the Levon we just prepared, or well, we didn't prepare it yet. This is the Levon we're preparing now. All right, so that's the recipe. Again, this is from theperfectloaf.com. It's a great site, go there, get your recipes, try it out, give it a shot. All right, and thank you, perfectloaf.com. I'm looking forward to making this. I know my wife is too, because she wanted it real bad. Okay, let's get rolling. We're gonna mix the Levon as our next step, and then we're gonna get into the rest of the recipe after that. All right, we're gonna get the Levon ready for the uh, sourdough pumpkin roll bake. And that needs uh, 48 grams each of water, or water, and sourdough that's ripe and ready. This has been about eight hours on this one. I wanted to try an eight hour for the dinner rolls uh, or the pumpkin rolls uh, to see how that works. Um, normally when I do sourdough, it's usually about a four hour uh, prep on the, on the uh, starter that I use. And uh, today I'm just gonna use uh, King Arthur uh, bread flour for the flour that I need. Again, that's 48 grams each. So we're gonna start by putting our starter in perfect all right 48 grams of starter are in and uh yep and uh 48 grams of water going in now i try to be very precise uh but a lot of bakers aren't so just get as close as possible and you'll be fine Although I do recommend you do what I'm doing. Um, get a scale, a decent one will be just fine. We have 48 grams of water. So uh, if you're using stuff like this, like um, you know, cups and spoons and whatever, it's not accurate, not like a scale will be. So I always say use a scale, uh, get as accurate as possible. And 48 grams of flour going in and uh, then we mix and we will have our Levon. 
Levine, Levine. You know, I never knew how to pronounce that. I'm not uh, not too up on that part of things. Uh, anyone wants to comment on that down below, feel free to let me know. I appreciate that because uh, some of the uh, terms that I may throw around, like if I'm not using them correct, well, that's bad on me, and I should learn. So. Uh, I appreciate that if anyone does think uh, does know that I'm saying something wrong or doing something wrong. Um, let me just get rid of that, and now I'm gonna mix, and then the Levon will be done, and I'm gonna let the Levon, uh, I'm gonna let that ripen up for about four hours uh, as well. Well, I'm gonna let that ripen up for four hours uh, so that I can use it uh, when I start mixing the, the dough together. And we are done on the prep. I'm just gonna use, I don't really need to because I, I know this starter really well. Uh, so when I use it for baking, I, I don't really need I don't really need to see this because I, I know where it's gonna end up. So I'm gonna I have a proofing box. I'm gonna put it in there and then uh, we'll be back to uh, start mixing all the dough together. All right, we're gonna be mixing our ingredients. For this, I'm gonna use the stand mixer. Um, I'm following the recipe as closely as I can today, although my wife made one slight change. Instead of whole milk, she wanted soy milk, so we're just gonna do that instead for her. With that said, uh, I do pre-measure the ingredients, so if you haven't done that step yet, if you're not ready there, and you're trying to follow along while baking, this is a good, good time to just pause uh, take care of that and then uh, you'll be ready to go um, with me okay so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add the water the flour the Levon the whole milk the honey and the pumpkin puree and the salt so the good the good thing with this Levon is that it uh, it's basically the exact amount you need <laughs> so uh, I don't have to worry about measuring that on the fly so we're good to go there okay so we'll uh, we'll start by adding the water and the flour and we'll mix it with the let me uh, actually do this for you so we're gonna use this paddle hook uh, not the dough hook which is this one this is the dough hook and uh, we'll get to this but right now we're gonna start with the paddle hook and um, we're gonna mix on a speed this is a KitchenAid so we're gonna mix on a, uh, a speed setting of one or the stir setting uh, if that's what yours says uh, it's like basically the lowest mixing setting. So we'll, we'll start there and then we'll take it from there. So first I am gonna just turn that on and I'm gonna just start pouring in a little bit of flour for now um, because I'm, otherwise I'm just you know mixing nothing with that. So now I'll add the water in and I'm just pouring a little slow uh, just in case. One thing about my stand mixer is there's not a whole lot of space uh, to pour pour in the ingredients. <laughs> that makes it a little challenging. All right, that's the water and the flour. It's gonna be very dry, so I'm just gonna keep adding the rest of the ingredients. We're gonna get the Levon in there next. Oh, and uh, you know, you may have noticed I have a towel under the stand mixer. That's because the um, I do sourdough directly on the workbench and I just don't want it to get scratched up or dirty or anything. Um, so I figure I'll just throw, you know, have a towel under the stand mixer. All right, um, just getting the last bits of the Levon out. Good enough. Wait, no, actually there's a bit more in there. <laughs> How did I miss that? All right. So as you can see right now, it's all a bit crumbly. Uh, that's okay. And uh, it's gonna keep mixing as we go. The next step is uh, the whole milk, or in my case, the soy milk. So I'm pouring that in. That's gonna add a little more liquid. It's gonna help the dough form. All right, that's in. And uh, after that, I think what we'll do is the honey and then the pumpkin puree. So, honey is going in, and because I'm trying to get a little more even distribution, I'm kind of doing that a little slow. 
one thing I'm going to do right now is just get, yeah, there we go. Got a big glob of it out because I had to, you know, scrape it with the spatula inside the container. Just try and get the rest of that out there. Do my best. See if I can, uh, yeah, there we go. Just kind of, kind of using the dough to, to handle that for me. Um, so it's kind of coming together and starting to be around the hook, but I'm not done yet. So I got to get the pumpkin puree in next and then the salt after. So now we're going to get the pumpkin in there, putting that in. Right? I mean, it's not going to be a pumpkin sourdough roll without the pumpkin. <laughs> Put that in. I'm kind of glad I'm not doing this one by hand. This one's going to be a bit messier than my, uh, my normal bakes. As you can see, it's already making a mess. Let's see if I can get a little more out of there. I want as much pumpkin as possible from the container. I probably should have just went a little overboard, but that's all right. Put that one in. And, and uh, see how much more of it I can get off the spatula because this is it. That's all that's going in. Yeah. What I may do is uh, I may pull one of my uh, bowl scraper situations out of my container and see if I can scrape down the sides of the bowl just a little bit. Actually, I'm kind of glad I got the towel here because that is, uh, you know, taking up some of the mess. I can just, you know, wash that out in the washer dryer set up here. Yeah, yeah, good enough. All right, let's get the salt in and then we're gonna be done with this, this piece, this part. Now, we have butter, but we're not using it just yet. That's coming, but not just yet. So hang in there for the butter. All right, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna mix for about two more minutes or so, or roughly. Uh, we're just making sure there's no like, you know, spots or dry bits or anything in here. Um, I mean, it's pretty well incorporated, but I can see a few spots. Yeah, see, there's, there's definite spots where it's trapped on the hook here, on the paddle hook, and it's not coming off. So the way I'm gonna deal with that is to just use my spatula to kind of kick it down and then I'm gonna you know, kind of pull this up so I can do this, make it a little easier. Yeah, see, see how it comes right off the hook once I do that? That's what we want. We wanna just you know, make sure that it's getting mixed a little better, uh, a little more ro uh, robust, I guess. I don't know what the word is there. All right, and I'm just gonna use a spatula to scrape the bowl sides down a little more, see if, you know, how much more stuff I can get off of there. Uh, do a little better job with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Looking good, looking good. All right. All right, yeah. Just kind of put that back on the hook, right? All right, so now <clears throat> what we'll do is back on, and now we'll get that two minutes in there, see, see if we can get it better incorporated. Yeah, already I see some improvement in the mix. It's, uh, you know, once I pulled it off the hook, it got a little better. Uh, I may do one more round of that real quick. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, oops. <laughs> Baking, you know, you make a mess. <laughs> So you got little flower bits in there too. It's not a hundred percent, so we want to go just a little longer. All right. All right, we're gonna let that run, and you know, for about a minute, and then we'll take it from there. Not even sure we need that much. It's actually looking pretty good right now, so I think I'm gonna stop. All right, so that's now mixed, uh, which is good. It's clumping to the hook for sure, um, but that's not the hook we want it actually clumping to. <laughs> it's the other one that we're about to switch to. So let me clean this off one more time. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, 100%, but, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be good, uh, you know, incorporated well. 
All right, let's get that off of there. Oops, almost lost a bit there. Get off my spatula. All right. Just trying to get, ooh, hello, that went flying. Uh, just trying to get as much of this into the bowl. You know, I'd like to have the dough be the rest, you know, be what gets baked, not, you know, a mess on the floor or anything, or on a hook or washed off or anything. All right, I think we're good here. Let me just put that there. All right. Got that hook on, gonna get the spatula out. All right, so now that the dough hook is on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix on speed two, which is just above the stir setting on mine, so speed two. And uh, we're gonna do that for about five minutes, make sure it's clumping around the hook, uh, and then we'll take it from there. And while that's mixing, I'm gonna move some of my stuff to the sink. I uh, just, you know, I like to clean up as much as possible while I'm doing, doing things. All right, we are uh, getting it to about where it needs to be. Uh, you can't see it, but I can see it in there. Uh, you see parts that are probably popping up, but it is clumping around the hook down toward the bottom. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shut it off because we are done with this step. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're just going to, uh, actually, sorry, we are not done with this step. I can actually see it falling off the hook right now. So let's get that a little longer. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do this probably for a couple more minutes. Um, in fact, I see some bits that still need some work. So I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it go a little longer. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely some spots that need work. Let me, um, let me actually do this real quick. Kind of tilt it back up. So, yeah, you see how it just, like, I don't know if you noticed that, but it just fell right off the hook uh, when I pulled it up. So, clearly, yeah, there we go. Now we'll do that. All right, so we'll give it a couple more minutes. Make sure it gets better mixed. You, I can definitely see some spots that need a little more work. And it's clumping right around the hook again. So <laughs> it's getting there. It's almost there. It's not quite there. Yeah, yeah, that, that last step certainly helped. It's definitely clumping up now. It's, it's off the sides of the bowl. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for stuff like that. Yeah, it's getting pretty well mixed now. It's starting to look really good. Yeah, I'm glad I uh, realized my error there and uh, gave it a couple more minutes. So I'm going to let it go just a little longer just to be safe because I'm still seeing a few spots that are just a little bit off. But we'll take it from there in about a minute or two. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good now. We're in good shape now. I like it, I like where we're at. All right, so I think, uh, I think we're about done. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll add the butter and start, well, we'll start mixing again. And then we'll add the butter uh, very slowly. So I've got the butter all, you know, here. Uh, the butter's room temperature. So if it looks a little melty, I don't know if you can see that. Well, it depends what camera we're looking at here. I got three different ones. Anyway, it looks a little melty. It's because it's, it's, because it's at room temperature. So uh, when we use it, it's, uh, it's gonna be very easy to get into the bowl, but don't put it all in at once, and we'll, we'll see that in a bit. Uh, little by little, put it in there over the course of maybe five or you know, five minutes or so. Anyway, all right, that's what we got. I'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, off camera, I actually tilted this up, so just to, maybe you can get a little bit better of a shot when I started the next phase, which is to add the butter. Butter, all right. And uh, so what we're gonna do for the butter, it's going to be speed one, and we're gonna slowly add parts of the butter over the course of maybe five minutes or so, uh, or mix it in over the course of five minutes or so. Uh, don't, do not put all the butter in at once. You kinda wanna make sure it's getting in there as you go. 
All right, I'm gonna tilt this back down and we're going to lock it and then get back in motion. Now, because it's room temperature, it's pretty much all over the bowl. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. shut it off for a moment because I can see one thing this happens a lot is you have to watch your dough on the hook sometimes it just swirls around and around and around and you just yeah you, you just got to get it off the hook to, to get some progress there we go so we're gonna give that an opportunity right there turn that back on Yeah, see, that's a little bit better, but we're gonna have to do that probably a couple more times as we get more butter in. Because uh, one thing you may start seeing, I can see it, but you may start seeing the butters all over the side of the bowl. <laughs> yeah, I wanna get it off the hook again. All right, see if we can maybe Kind of turn it around so that the part that does not get the butter right now is getting it. It's definitely getting the butter as it goes. It's just, uh, you know, you kind of gotta work it a bit in the in the mixing bowl. I'm gonna see if I can maybe get, yeah, let's do it like that. Just trying to get the butter off the sides a bit. See if that helps incorporate a little. I can definitely see the butter getting in. It's just, uh, it's a little slow going at the moment, uh, but it's def definitely getting in there now. Um, probably need a bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh, let's do it again. Would help if I remembered which switch does what, cause I keep unlocking it and then turning it off. Little, little mistake there, but fortunately there's no risk or very little risk for me. I mean, I'm not uh, doing anything crazy. Just messy. <laughs> Just definitely seeing, it's coming together, but it's gonna need a, f a little longer than I thought. I think I said five minutes, but it's gonna be a little longer than that. So um, I may end up just speeding up the footage for you guys so that you don't have to suffer. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep working it. Yeah, you just see me kind of pushing in a, in some spots where I see some bulky areas that just aren't quite getting caught. Yeah, I can still see some spots. It's coming together though, it's almost there. Maybe a minute or so longer ought to do it, but it's doing pretty good now. Yeah, that there's like one big bulky spot. I think I got it now. It seems to be hitting the hook pretty well. Gonna let it run a little bit longer and then uh, we will transfer to a, a, a bulk container. Yeah, yeah, this is just about ready to go here. A few more seconds and I'm gonna just move it. Yep, 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 yep. Looking good, looking good. Alright, let's call it. Alright, so. 
we got our dough mixed and as you can see it's looking looking pretty good it's very wet right now because the butter really added a lot of wet to it i'm gonna move that to the side get our old trusty container here let's get uh let's get as much of this off the hook as possible you know we want it in the roll not elsewhere <laughs> to the best of our ability to do so anyway gonna do this just get it in there yeah, there it goes Came out. All right. now uh, I like to kind of just get this a little bit pressed down um, like I said, I haven't done this particular recipe before. This is new to me, so I don't know how much it's going to rise, but I expect it to rise. In fact, it feels pretty fluffy as it is, probably because of all the butter that's in there. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think we're in good shape. All right, all we need to do is cover. And looks like it's about the same size as one of my average uh, sourdough loaves. So that'll be fun, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come back in about 30 minutes. It's uh, 30 minutes or so. We'll do a stretch and fold, kind of like with sourdough, same thing there. And then uh, 30 minutes after that, we'll do another one, and then we're going to let it sit for a while and uh, bulk proof. All right, I'll see you in 30. All right, uh, it's been half an hour. We're going to do our first stretch and fold. Uh, things are looking good. I'm very curious as to how this will actually turn out since uh, this is a different recipe and I, uh, it, it, I just haven't done it before. So let's get in there. Now it certainly doesn't do things the way that say a regular sourdough would uh, for stretch and folds. It feels a lot looser. It's there. It's together. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it definitely feels a lot looser. Uh, it's going to need, I think, more time to proof and bulk ferment. But it did pretty well. And I forgot to use a, a wet hand for this. So uh, <laughs> it still did pretty good. Anyway, uh, we'll be uh, doing another stretch and fold in half an hour. And then we will let it sit for the bulk proof. All right, we are back for our second stretch and fold, and uh, let me show you this, actually. I'm not gonna use the overhead, but I'll show you on the side and the front. Um, it's bulking up a bit. It's already rising. Here, let me kind of get in there for you. All right, like, you can already see it rising a bit. Uh, well, maybe, <laughs> yeah, it's easier. Like, when I kind of, kind of, get my head in the shot, I guess, uh, I can see that it's risen a good centimeter already from where I started. That's really good, and that's only been half an hour. So, we're gonna do our second stretch and fold right now, and uh, I forgot to wet my hand again, so it is what it is, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. We are going to, and it is it is feeling a bit more firmed up a bit, uh, a bit more firmed up, it's, uh, definitely a little more elastic so it's doing it's doing really good it's doing really good um, I do see some uh, some butter bits in here still uh, I can feel those uh, I guess I didn't do quite as good a job getting that in although the butter was pretty melty so maybe I just missed something else in there my wife will have to tell me if I messed that up or not for her anyway so we are done with the stretch and folds that is all whoops that is all good and what we're going to do now is we're going to leave it on the counter for uh, about four, three, three and a half more hours, four and a half hours total if you include the stretch and folds. And then uh, after that, we will uh, divide and shape them into dough balls, put them in a pan, and then proof in the fridge overnight, and we'll bake it tomorrow. All right, we are uh, done with the bulk fermentation. Uh, I don't even think I needed to let it go this long. I probably could have finished it an hour ago. I'm actually a little early. I, I didn't go the full four and a half hours here. Um, but it's clear to me anyway that it's done. The uh, The texture is much smoother now. 
Um, it's risen quite a bit. Uh, let me actually show you. So I uh, I started it here at the just about where the cord is. That's basically where my sourdough loaves go to. Um, it's already quite a bit more than that. Uh, I'll show you that camera too. Um, it looks like it's full of air, so it's it's in good shape. It's ready to go. So uh, one thing you want to do before this step, like a few minutes before, is uh, grab a. Um, this recipe calls for an eight by eight square pan or just really whatever pan you have or, or you want. Uh, butter it first. And uh, I left the butter out so it was already room temperature. Very easy for me to butter it with that. So that part is done. I'm ready to go. Uh, we want that ready to go so that we can basically put, you know, we have a place to basically put the uh, dough balls. So let me do this. Um, we need our scale again for this part. Uh, I also have some flour that I need. I gotta put it, do a little dusting up here so I can have a little easier time getting it out. Uh, the, the work surface as well, because I'm gonna be using that. Um, make sure that you get yourself a bench scraper. <laughs> gonna want one of those. Got that. All right, so one of these. And then, uh, turn that on. And then uh, what we do is we get it out onto the work surface and then we measure 70 grams each and we, we roll it into a ball and then we just put it into uh, the pan. So let's do that. It comes right out of the, uh, the bowl actually. That's pretty good for me. All right. Yeah, I can feel it. There, there's a ton of air in this thing. That's terrific. That's what we want. I'm just going to give it a little more dusting just to make it easier. Uh, for me to work with here. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna cut a piece off, see how big it is. And we are a little over where we need to be. So cut that part off. Still over, about that. Still over. So I'm trying to be exact to what the recipe called for and it called for 70 gram sections uh, 69.3 close enough all right so let's do this put that one over there grab these grab that what do we have here 55 try that 63 now we're too high <laughs> good enough i'll show you what to do so this one is a bunch of strips right i'll show you what to do with these kind of just do this right just roll them roll them into it and then that's not all but that just gets it into one piece right so we'll do that we'll grab that probably there whoops over there. still a little bit more perfect that one was on the dot all right get that don't worry let me just trying to get the surface a little bit right when I do this, yeah. rolling it's probably the easy step here. Uh, <laughs> getting it, you know, cut to size that's going to be a little, a little bit more because I have to do 16 of these. So uh, maybe some, uh, you know, camera action where I speed things up quite a bit. You know, I'm not like a you know a master here where I can just eyeball it and get it right. Um, some people can do that. I'm I'm not one of them. All right, grab that. So like I said, it's it's just it's how you roll the ball together when you do this part. Um, I'm just you know making sure there's enough flour on here. I will fix all that later. That one was exactly right. <laughs> That's rare. That's rare for me. I never get it right. Probably heard my head hitting the microphone. Anyway, like I said, I will roll these later. Right now, I'm just trying to get the sizes right.
Some of these are gonna be a little too big, but you know what? We have 16 of them, we're good to go. All right. Now here's what we're gonna do. So kind of like pizza, what I'm doing here is I'm rolling it out. Let's see a little, little pocket there I didn't really wanna keep. I'm gonna roll it out, I'm kind of stretching. Now, these are very small. That's kind of why I wanted to do it this way. And I'm tucking everything in under at the bottom, right? So I'm kind of doing this, like a little balloon, if you will. Just tucking it all in, getting it like that. And, you know, do a little roll here. I don't have to, but I'm doing it. And got ourselves a little ball. I'm gonna just move that over to the side right here in the corner of the pan. And we're gonna leave that one there. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Just make sure I roll it into a ball, tuck that in, tuck in all the edges get this so we're gonna have to do this a bunch of times <laughs> until we get them all in the pan so I'm gonna go do that and probably not a whole lot to say but as you can see right I'm just kind of now I'm starting to use the bench a little bit to get it fully rolled into shape and I'm just putting all these into the pan that's all I'm doing just rolling them into shape putting them into the pan So I'm gonna finish up the rest of these and then I'll show you what I do with the pan after. So this is what I'm talking about, right? It is full, and uh, this is a nine inch pan. So the nine inch pan that's full eh, looks good. All right, so all we need to do now is we need to uh, proof it in the fridge overnight. I happen to have these cover mates that work really well for me. This one's probably bigger than I needed, um, but you can use a shower cap or just you know wrap a plastic bag around it and tie it off. So this is gonna go into the fridge and we will be baking it tomorrow. And tomorrow I'll show you what the last step is before baking, uh, depending on whether or not you're using a steam oven. I have a steam oven, but I'm not going to. Uh, so there will be another step to uh, top off the uh, rolls with something. All right, see you then. All right, welcome back. This is the second day we are getting ready to bake the sourdough pumpkin rolls. Let's grab that. I uh, took the rolls out of the fridge. You do that about four hours, uh, in a, uh, four hours before uh, you need to bake. Uh, I have the egg wash prepared and uh, we're gonna use sesame seeds today uh, as a topping for this. Uh, the recipe does call for salt, but my wife doesn't like salt, so we're just gonna skip that one. Um, so first we're gonna put the egg wash on uh, and the oven is preheating for about half an hour and it's ready to go. So we're gonna do the egg wash first. Gonna get that on there. And make a little bit of a mess in the process, apparently. That's a-okay. I mean, these are, uh, these are looking real good. I, uh, I even see some bubbles on some of them. That means, uh, that means they, uh, they're very gassy and they got a lot of air in them, which is definitely part of what we want for that fluffiness. So this is gonna be a fun one, I think. I think it's gonna turn out great. Plus I might have a little egg left over to do a scramble <laughs> while I'm making these. We'll see what happens. All right, I think for the most part, we are in pretty good shape. Just kind of trying to get in between just a little bit, get around the edges. Kind of really get the egg wash on there. Get a nice golden brown color with that on the surface while we bake. That's what, that's actually the reason we're doing it. All right, I think we are in good shape there. Let me just clean up a little mess I made. I, uh, I do like to keep my work surface kind of clean. I do wash it regularly and uh, just, you know, keep the stuff off. All right, let's get some, let's get some sesame seeds on there. You know, my wife loves these, so I, I don't have a problem with being generous about it, but I think we are getting a pretty good coating of those. All right, call that day. All 
All right, so I'm gonna put these in the oven and uh, we're gonna bake. took the pumpkin rolls out of the oven um, of course I forgot something I forgot my oven is way more efficient so I did not need as much cook time or bake time to do this so I'm gonna just get them out of the pan they've been cooling for a few minutes yeah. yeah that's the easier way all right now we're gonna let it cool a little longer and uh, yeah, they are they're actually looking really good yeah. All right. Now, these are yours. You're eating these, so I think they look pretty good. Yeah, you can you can touch. You can grab one if you think it's not too hot. Yeah, they're really stuck together and, and hot, right? Yeah. They look good though. Very soft. Go ahead, eat it that hot. <laughs> All right, give it a few minutes. <laughs> Should be cooling up in like 10 minutes. All right, we're gonna let it cool down a little longer and then um, she's gonna eat one. All right, uh, we let it cool down a few more minutes and uh, it's looking pretty good. My wife actually ripped one open already. I think she just can't wait to eat it. It looks pretty good. Um, I think that uh, a lesson on my oven is uh, definitely lower, for me, lower the temperature so it can bake longer. I can see a little bit of a spot in the middle of that one, so um, probably just have to zap it in the microwave, but uh, it smells really good though. Um, so that, that's, a, that's still a win in my book, and they rose really well, they, they smell great, uh, they look really good in general. I'm kind of going to just rotate a little, give the other cameras some angles here, and uh, then my wife's going to eat one soon. Yeah, yeah, these are looking great. All right, uh, so um, let's do this. Uh, she's gonna eat one. I don't know if we'll get any of that on camera, but uh, let's not worry about that. What we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna talk about some things I learned doing this recipe, uh, some pieces of advice I have, some practical stuff for you. Uh, we'll get right to that in just a moment. And uh, before we do that though, uh, if you did enjoy this video, please go to theperfectloaf.com, that's where this recipe came from. Great site, particularly for those who want to learn how to bake. And uh, lots of good stuff there. And then uh, as well, please uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, really help me out, do me a favor on the channel. All right. All right, that concludes the show and tell part. Let's get right down to the lessons learned. All right, uh, before we wrap this up, I've got some lessons learned, a couple in particular for me. Number one, I use the Inova Precision Oven, and with that oven, it's very precise, so I need to always try to remember that it's very important I both lower the recommended temperature setting and also uh, the duration of the bake, uh, because the oven is way more precise than a standard home oven is. If that's what you're using, a standard home oven, uh, go with the recommended uh, temperature and baking settings, uh, length of time for baking settings. If you have an oven like I do, the Inova Precision Oven, then definitely try you know lower temperature and shorter times uh, until you get it right. Uh, so I'm going to work on that for next time. Additionally, my wife had a comment that it was a bit buttery uh, for her taste. So uh, I'm going to try reducing the amount of butter from instead of one full stick, uh, which is 113 grams. We're going to go with 90 next time and see how that plays. Uh, I think we'll get pretty good results with a little bit less of the butter in there. Uh, so those are two things for me for next time. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, and let's see what else we can do. Um, I think you should always invest in an oven thermometer, uh, particularly if all you've got is a home oven, because the temperature ranges vary wildly in those things. I've seen an oven that was 75 degrees off you put it to 450 it was only 375 when you check the internal thermometer that we put in there so i've seen i've seen ovens get that bad so it's good it's good to know what the actual oven temperature is if you're using a standard home oven that's uh that's definitely something uh, i think is worth investing in also remember temperature is an ingredient as i just talked about two things related to temperature do matter uh, it also matters when you're proofing bread, uh, rolls, whatever. The temperature of the environment you're proofing in also matters, as does the humidity. 
That's uh, another aspect of the temperature being an ingredient. So always consider temperature as part of the baking ingredients and the process when you are baking anything. Another thing to do, invest in a kitchen scale. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos. They tend to point out things like cups and spoons and a dash of this and a pinch of that. That's not accurate. Um, I've seen, like, do this. Get a scale and then get a cup, right? and then put a cup of flour on the scale, then put a cup of water on the scale. Very different weights, right? That's why, we, that's why bakers always use a weighted measuring system rather than volume with, with cups and spoons or whatever. So keep that in mind. That's another thing that's worth investing in. It helps a lot, with, particularly with recipes like this, where you know, a stick of butter is a stick of butter, but you know, the grams, grams matter. So that's another one. Um, one thing I tried to do with this recipe as well uh, that uh, differs a little bit in the way I shaped the dough balls, I kind of went a little bit more with um, kind of the pizza dough ball method where you kind of pinch it like into a balloon and then you just seal the bottom up and then you just roll it tight and then put it in the tray. I felt that worked pretty well. It probably looked like it didn't, but it actually was pretty easy. Uh, I just had to do 16 of them, so it just took a little while, but it worked pretty well. Might want to give that a try, or go with Maurizio's version on the Perfect Loaf website. That works too. It might be easier for you. So just figure out which one works. Um, another one, for me, I don't use the stand mixer all that often. So one thing I noticed is that um, a lot of people who don't use stand mixers all that often they are kind of focused a lot on the settings and the exact time that was mentioned, but that's um, as useful as that is um, when you're just trying to figure things out, you have to also pay attention to what you're actually looking for in the dough. You'll saw, you saw at one point I referred to the clumping around the dough hook. At first I thought it was clumping, but then when I pulled the hook up, it just fell right off the hook. So it wasn't yet clumping. That's why I put it back down and I kept going because I, know, I knew what I was looking for and I needed to see the dough be ready. So keep in mind when you're using stand mixers, uh, things like that, that you know, it may say you know, mix on speed one for two minutes, but you may need three, you may need four, you may need less. It just depends. You, everybody's mixer is different, the dough always is different. So it's more about what you're looking for rather than the specifics. Um, the specifics are more of a guideline. So those are some things uh, that I took away from this one. Uh, I think the results came out great. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know this is a long version of it. Uh, I'm going to do a more instructional version real soon that's shorter and just really focuses on in on what's important. Uh, so if that's what you're interested in, be on the lookout for that. That's coming soon. Otherwise, uh, I have other recipes coming up and uh, I look forward to sharing them with you very, very soon. Thanks everybody and take care. Happy baking.